Hello everyone, this is Brad Tallis from Autodesk. I wanted to welcome you to today's Fusion 360 Live, uh, where I'm going to be showing how I went and created this little handle uh, to go swimming with the manatees. Um, before I dive in, we uh, noticed there was a change on YouTube. Um, if you're not seeing the chat, you might have to refresh your window uh, for the chat to show up. Um, also, if for whatever reason um, it doesn't seem to be streaming at a high quality, you can always go to the little gear icon inside of YouTube and specify what um, format, for example, 480, 720, uh, 1080, etc. So um, if you ever get latency or whatever, go ahead and do that also. I have Aaron on the line. He's helping me with the, uh, the chat. So. This hopefully will be a fun one for all of you. It definitely was for me. Um, kind of the backstory of today's live stream. My wife absolutely loves manatees. In fact, she even has little stuffed animal manatees. Um, and it was her 50th birthday this year uh, in January. And so I surprised her with a trip to Florida to swim with the manatees. Um, if, you, uh, if you've never done that before, I highly recommend it. It was, it was an incredible bucket list experience um, but since I knew I was going to be underwater swimming with the manatees I obviously wanted to record that and I have one of these little action cameras um, and I wanted to be able to hold the camera instead of having it strapped to my forehead because I was going to have a snorkel on for example I didn't want it strapped to my chest or wrist I wanted something that was handheld um, and I have fairly larger hands than most people, so I wanted to design it myself um, so it fit my hand. And then third, I wanted to make sure it would float. So this thing is actually hollow. Um, you can't obviously see it, but that was one of the design criteria that I wanted was that you know if I accidentally dropped it, uh, it would float. So I'm going to walk through how I ended up designing this part and sent it to my uh, 3D printer um, back here in the background. Um, this is a pretty cool printer uh, from AlphaWise. I did put a link in the description of a review that I did on that printer. So if you're interested in it, you can follow that link. I also put a link to a video that I put together of our manatee experience. So you can kind of see, um, in fact, I'll go ahead and play um, just a second here just a little clip of it so you can kind of see um, what we got to do here. So, um, okay. I'm gonna jump ahead here just a little bit. So there's my wife swimming along with manatee. Um, so you'll see here actually in just a little tiny bit, there she is again, manatee swimming right underneath her. You'll actually see me holding the camera right after this clip of these guys. You'll actually see me using the handle um, that we designed in Fusion 360 and printed um, on that printer right there. <laughs> so anyways, I'm going to go ahead and pause that. If you want to see the whole video, you can um, go out to uh, the link in the description and, and watch that video. It's, it's pretty cool, I think. Okay, so let's dive in. Um, this is what we're going to be creating today. I'm going to show how I went about creating this handle. Now, I'm not saying the way I did it is the perfect way or the exact way you should design something like this, um, but it's kind of a, an interesting way. I like to show tips and tricks for all of you, and hopefully what I'm going to show today will help you. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start a new design, and I want to make sure I'm in millimeters in this example. So I'm going to switch to millimeters for all the people that like to use the metric system. Um, so one thing that I did was that I actually um, took a picture of my hand. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna organize everything really uh, easily in the browser. So I'm gonna start by creating a new component. Now, I highly recommend you organize your designs using components, and you'll see why as we go through our design. So I'm going to say new component and I'm just going to call this like handle or something like that. Spell it right. Handle grip and I'll say OK and you'll see I now have a new component called handle grip and you can kind of think of a component as like a file folder. 
uh, where everything it has to do with this handle grip, it's sketches, it's images, it's uh, origins, it's bodies, etc., are all going to be underneath the uh, handle grip. Okay, so like I mentioned, I took a picture of my hand, so I'm going to insert a canvas. So it's going to let me go out to my computer, and let me see if I can find it real quick. There it is. And it's asking for which face. Well, I'm going to draw it on this front face here, and I can scale it up. Now, you'll notice it kind of came in the wrong direction, but that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and um, rotate this real quick. And now you're kind of looking at you know, a, a top-down view of my hand. Now, why did I do this? Well, I kind of wanted the handle grip to fit inside my hand. Well, what size did this come in? I have no idea. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, OK. Look at it from this front view. And here's what I was talking about earlier. Notice that my canvas is organized under my handle grip component. So it's keeping track of everything that has to do with this handle grip. So I'm going to expand this open real quick. And then I can calibrate this canvas. So you'll notice it says calibrate. And what this allows me to do is I'm going to pick two points. I'm just going to go ahead and pick the bottom of my hand, the top of my hand. And you'll see it came up as like 39 millimeters. Well, I measured this with um, some digital calipers and it came out to be 83. So watch what happens when I type in 83 and hit enter. You'll notice that the image gets bigger. So it is now exactly 83 millimeters from the top to the bottom of my fingers here. Okay. So now this is the exact size or it's really close to the exact size of my hand. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the origin and um, I'm going to move this uh, image to be a little bit more lined up with my origin. So I can come back to here and say edit canvas. I'm just going to drag like so. And what I want to do is I'm going to basically draw something that we're going to revolve around. So I kind of want to position this where it might be held in my hand. So maybe right along this you know these digits right here for example okay again I'm not saying you have to do this when you're designing something but this just allowed me to get a better visual picture of what I was creating so now here's my zero zero point and this will make more sense as we go through um, another thing I might do is that maybe I'll come in and change my opacity to be a little bit less I don't need it to be quite so stark so maybe somewhere around in the maybe the 30 or something like that looks pretty good. So you have full control over the opacity of this background image. You can kind of see as I slide around, I can make it very, very light or I can make it as, as dark as the original image. But in this case, I'm just going to go around 30. Okay, I'll go ahead and create a sketch on this front face. And you'll notice that our sketch is organized underneath this component. Again, I really like components. It helps organize things. Okay. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle that kind of defines the overall shape of the grip. So it looks like something about this size um, is around 20 to about, you know, looks like almost like 100 or so. So I'm going to actually type in 20 for that distance. And then for this distance, I want to go a little bit taller. Let's go maybe like 100, let's just say 110 in this case. Um, actually, that's a little bit too tall. Let's just do 105. So again, I'm kind of using the image to help me decide what size I want this to be. Okay. Um, it's no longer blue, so I know that that's fully constrained. Now, the next thing I want to do is create some indentations for my fingers to fit in. So again, kind of using the image as reference, I'm just going to draw a circle. Um, let's just do maybe something like this that kind of cuts in a little bit. And so I can kind of see that, you know, it's touching the top of the finger there. And maybe I pull this down just a little bit like so, and you can kind of see it's touching the bottom of the finger there. Okay. I, I didn't type in a dimension or anything like that. In fact, I really don't care about the size of this right now. 
I need uh, three more of those or four total. So I'll come in here and let's do a rectangular pattern. Okay. So what's the object? I'll say that's the object and I'll start to drag down. And you can kind of see it's making copies of these. And you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing here. We're going to start, you know, creating these indentations. Now I need four of them. So I'm going to increase to four and I'll drag that down like so. Again, kind of using the background image to define where these circles need to go. You can kind of see, I can even use the grid lines to sort of help me out. I'm doing pretty good right there. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say, okay. And I now have these four circles. Okay. Now, I can freely move these guys around. So you can kind of see I can drag and move these around. I want to start to control that a little bit. So here's a neat little tip that I want to share with you. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. And I'm going to draw a line from this intersection here to this intersection down here. So for example, if I click there and I click there, you'll see it automatically snaps to those intersections. Now, I don't want this to be an object line, so I'll go ahead and click on it. And in my sketch palette, you'll notice that there's an option for construction. And if I click on construction, you'll see that it turns it to a dashed line. In fact, I'm gonna undo um, just to show you why do I want it to be a construction line. Well, notice because I drew this line right here, it's kind of split my circle uh, into two separate areas right here okay if I change that to a construction line you'll notice that it no longer thinks it's an object line and it doesn't split my uh, um, profile okay now how come it doesn't do this whole thing well obviously the rectangle edge <laughs> is splitting my profile also but I like to use construction lines you can kind of think of them back in the drafting days where you drew a light pencil line and then you come back and trace over it with, um, you know, like a darker ink line or a darker pencil line, for example. Okay. Okay, so now I have that line. So what, what do I do with that? Well, I'm going to use a constraint. And I'm going to use the collinear constraint. Now, I don't use this one all that often, but here's a prime example where it'll come in handy. So I could say collinear. And I want this line to be collinear with this line. And watch what happens when I click. And we do both of those. And you can kind of see it drag that over. And now these circles have to stay on that object line. I can change the size of them and all that kind of stuff. But that intersection, you can kind of see these intersections are always staying on that line. It doesn't matter how big or small I make the circle or where I position them, they're staying collinear on this rectangular line you see right here. So that's the collinear constraint. Okay. Now here's what's kind of cool. Now you can actually kind of see the, the profile that we're going to use to revolve around. We're going to use the revolve command in this case. Okay, but you've already seen me do this. I can actually change what this grip is going to look like. So you can see how deep these finger grooves are going to be just by dragging and changing the size of these circles. And that's kind of the fun part of this is just I can tweak it to be exactly the way I want. So it fits in my hand personally. And we'll come back to that here in a moment. So I'm going to say finish sketch. Okay. So I'm back in my 3D environment. I'll go ahead and turn off my origin real quick. Then I'm gonna select my profile, come in here and say, create revolve. Okay. So it has the profile selected and now it's asking for the axis. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this edge right here and you can see how it revolves. It takes that profile and revolves it around that center axis. So you can kind of see what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and say okay. 
and we start to have the design looking the way we want and it's a, a little bit weird but we'll come back and we'll fix that here in just a moment um, I want to round over this top edge uh, let's just make that um, let's just do maybe like three millimeter in fact I'll do the top and the bottom edge now I've shown this in previous uh, live streams but I think it's a really cool tip that I like to show so you'll notice I've selected two edges the top one and the bottom one and I've made it three millimeters well I also want to fill it these kind of these sharp edges here and I could do that as a separate fillet feature but because I'm kind of defining all of the fillets for this handle let's do it all in one fillet feature so all I have to do is hit this add new selection and then I can come in and grab for example that edge that edge there I'll just grab these remaining edges and let's just do maybe um, like a one millimeter a pretty small one and there you can kind of see how it's filleting those sharp edges with a one millimeter fillet and you can see we're basically doing multiple fillets all in one fillet feature right there and if I were to edit that feature you can see I could come back and change the three millimeter or I could change the one millimeter but it just kind of helps clean my um, timeline instead of having a two or three different fillet features I can kind of do them all in one okay okay moving on here I really don't need the image in the background anymore so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my canvas and now we have a better image of what our handle is supposed to look like um, and I'm gonna do another cool tip that I use a lot um, I use the section analysis tool almost in every single design that I do um, the reason for that is it allows me to look inside of my part or my assembly so I did section analysis and it's asking for a face well I don't have any flat faces really that I can slice through but I can click on a plane so when I click on this origin plane you can see that it's sectioning through and it's showing me that this is a solid body okay I'll go ahead and say OK and you'll notice that there's an analysis tab or I should say analysis folder uh, under my browser and I can have multiple analyses I could have three or four different section analyses and they'll all be displayed underneath this analysis folder and I can turn them on or off at any time using the little eyeball next to analysis okay okay so let me go ahead and view the front view again the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna make it hollow that way it'll float so I'm going to come in here and say modify shell and this is again a very very powerful tool where I can create a an even wall thickness through my part now you'll notice it says faces slash body so for example if I'm gonna rotate this a little bit you'll notice as I'm hovering over um, it does select the body sometimes it only allows me to select faces for example so another tip is to actually grab the body from the uh, browser over here so if I just click on that it'll allow me to select the whole thing and then I can start I'm gonna start dragging so you can kinda of see what the shell command does it basically creates an even wall thickness all the way through okay now what I'm gonna show next um, this is just kinda of some personal experience I want to 3d print this thing so I'm actually going to I'm gonna design this with 3d printing in mind for example um, my nozzle thickness and I don't want to have any supports on the inside of this handle so I'm gonna to have to incorporate those things into my design so the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I want to have this to be a solid wall basically and I don't want to have to have any like hatch patterns or anything like that be 3d printed so I'm going to come in here and type in my nozzle diameter I'm gonna say 0.4 
And that's the size of my 3D printer nozzle. Now if I zoom up, I can see that's pretty tiny, okay? Might not be strong enough, you know, if I grip this thing a little bit too tight or whatever, it might shatter. I also don't want water to leak into it, so I need to make this a little bit larger. Now let's pretend I'm really bad at math, and I want to make this twice the thickness. So I'm going to type in times 2, and notice that it's actually going to use that formula. So it's going to take 0.4 and multiply it by 2, which gives me you know, twice the wall thickness. In fact, I might come in here and say, well, what does 3 look like? So instead of having to do the math in my head, like what's 0.4 times 3 or whatever, I can just create a formula and say, you know what, I want this to be, um, let's do maybe, I don't know, I can keep going, let's just say 4, let me try 5. 5 looks a little bit too thick, right? So instead of having to do all this math, I just come in here and do my nozzle diameter times, you know, a number. So in this case, I like four. I think that's gonna be thick enough. Now, why do I care about this? Well, you'll see when I send this to my slicer, it'll actually create four lines to create this wall. And this will make more sense once we send it to the printer, okay? So again, neat little tip right there is you can do math formulas. I could even come in here and create a parameter. So I could come in here to change parameters, create a user parameter, and I could call this, you know, for example, wall thickness. And my expression, I will just say, you know, is 0.4, and I could say times, let me, I'll do times two in this case, just to kind of show you. And notice it's figuring out the math for me. So I now have a user parameter called wall thickness. I could go back to my shell and instead of typing the formula there, I could start typing in something like wall thickness and there's that user parameter. And it set it to whatever wall thickness was. So again, instead of having to remember where did I set the thickness of my wall in my timeline, I could actually use a parameter. Let me kind of shrink this down a little bit and come in here and say, you know what, I want that to be um, times four. And when I do that, it instantly changes my model. So neat little trick there that you can use user parameters also. Um, and that, it's a really quick and easy way to make changes without having to hunt through your timeline and look for that dimension or that feature that you might have used. Okay. So um, the next thing I want to do is I don't want to have any internal support structure. And as this is printing, it can print these curved walls no problem. But once it gets up to here, it's got this flat region and 3D printing doesn't like that. It, it would need some kind of support to fix that. So instead of having this flat region, I want to have it ramp basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete that existing fillet in there. So I'm just going to select it, right click and say delete and you'll see it removes it out of there. Then I'm going to create a new fillet. I could have modified that existing fillet um, but in this case I think it's just easier for me to say you know what I'm removing it and then I'm adding a new fillet in here. And I'm going to go ahead and drag this so you can kind of see what's going on now you can see that it's going to keep printing these layers and it's a gradual curve so it can print on top of the previous layer etc etc until it gets to up here now you'll notice it's still kind of flat right there so i want this blend to be to go all the way to the as far as it can but you'll notice as i'm dragging it suddenly jumps off and says hey i, I can't make it that size and I have no idea what size that is. Okay, so I'd have to come in here and say, okay, make it 18. Does that work? Okay, make it 18 and a half. Okay, that doesn't work. So it'd be, you know, a lot of trial and error and stuff like that. Well, here's another cool trip. I'm gonna click this little down arrow and say measure. Okay, now 
I want it to be the same radius as this edge right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that edge and it actually figured out that it's 18.4 for the radius and it created that automatically for me. So there was none of that trial and error stuff. I just measured an existing edge and let me, let me uh, backspace that so you can kind of see what's going on there. So this edge is touching this wall right here, right? And so I want it to be that exact same radius. So that's why I use that measure command. Okay, let me uh, recreate that since I did it so many times it wasn't happy. So let me go fill it. I'll say uh, measure. I'll click on that edge right there and I'll say okay. And again, looking at it kind of from this front view, as it's printing along, it's going to be able to put the next layer on top of the previous layer, no problem, all the way up here. And I won't have to have any internal support. Okay. Okay, now here's the fun part. Like I showed before, you can turn the, the analysis on or off, okay, at any time. I'm going to go ahead and turn my sketch back on. So I'm going to activate my sketch just by turning that back on. And watch what happens when I drag these circles around. So I'm going to drag this over to the right a little bit. And you'll see it instantly updates the shape of my grip. So I kind of got the, the design down. And now I can come back and kind of tweak where do I want these grips. So you can see I can move them up and down so I could have you know, more of a larger area up here and a smaller area down here. But maybe I want a larger area down here for my pinky to rest on. So I'm actually going to grab and drag these up a little bit. And now you can see I have an area maybe for my pinky to rest on. I can also figure out just how deep do I want these grooves to be. You know, you can kind of see I could make them pretty strong or pretty shallow. So I'm just going to kind of drag something like this say okay and that looks pretty good now you might be saying well is it still hollow on the inside and the answer is absolutely in fact let's make these changes like so and you'll see that it's still updating that shell because I'm driving the changes via the sketch so once again what I was showing there is I kinda got the basic idea you know what size it should be about what diameter it should be, and then I needed four finger grips, and now I kind of came in and just how deep do I want these finger grips to be? And I can tweak with that until, you know, maybe I print one or two of these as an example, and which one do I like better, right? And so the fact that your Fusion allows you to be so flexible in changing your design downstream, right? We've, we've already made a lot of design to this, you know, revolves, fillets, shells, another interior fillet, but I can come back to the very first thing I did was this sketch, and I can make changes to my design. I think that is wicked cool. So I'm going to leave it right about there. Okay. Let's go ahead and turn off my sketch. I don't really need to see it anymore. Okay. Um, now, the next thing I want to do is, and I'll go back to my camera here real quick. Um, the next thing I want to do is bring in um, a camera case. Now, I could have modeled it myself, but why spend the time to do that when there's probably quite a few out on like GrabCAD, etc. And that's exactly what I did. I went up to GrabCAD and I found a camera case that has the exact same mount that I have. So, um, I've already saved it. So, what I'm going to do is and you'll see it right here called camera case I'm gonna say insert into current design now you'll notice something happened when I do this when I say insert it's gonna give me a warning and it's gonna say that I need to please save the design before inserting components and you'll notice right now it says untitled so I'll go ahead and save this and let's just call it um, handle grip I'll hit save and now you'll see it says handle grip so you do have to save your design first 
But now I can come in and say insert into current design. And again, I just downloaded this off of GrabCAD. Okay. Now I want to kind of position it close to where it needs to be. So I'm going to say somewhere like this. And then the next thing I do is I usually flip it to the side. So let's take a look at it from the right side. And you'll notice that it's not centered at all. Now I could graphically try and center it, but I want to show another tip that I use a lot is I want it to be exactly centered. So I'm going to change my move type to point to point. Okay. Now what this allows me to do is I can say I want to go from the center of that circle to the center of this line and you'll notice it's going to snap to the center automatically for me. I'm not even having to hold down any special keys or anything. I'm just going to go ahead and click and you'll notice that it moved the camera case so now it's perfectly centered front to back but if I rotate it to the side like this you'll notice that it actually snapped to the edge there but that's okay. I'm going to now that I know it's exactly where it needs to be I can move it up and I can move it over and I'm gonna do something a little bit weird here I'm gonna leave it a little bit off center and this will make more sense here in a little bit but I want to have a larger area right here where I can recess a nut that is gonna screw you know the bolts gonna screw through and capture the nut um, in fact let me switch to my camera view so you can kinda of see what I'm talking about so you can see it's actually wider right here than it is over here and that's because there's a nut that's actually captured inside of that 3D print and so we're gonna model that okay so I'm gonna get this kinda close to where I want it to be so let's just do maybe something like that and I'll say okay and you'll notice it's still centered to the side because you know, we lined it up centered that way and then I just kinda moved it up and over for the front and that's going to basically get it where I want it to be. And again, this is just kind of like as close as I want it to be. I mean, like I'm, I'm coming up with the design. I don't really care about dimensions per se right now. Okay. Okay. So one of the things I want to do now is I'm going to... Um, I want to capture some information from this model okay so I'm going to want to create a sketch so I'm going to say create sketch but notice what's happening here you'll notice that my grip is not centered anymore now why is that well it's because it never was I did it from this front view and drew my rectangle to the left and then revolved it so you'll notice that my origin isn't really where I want it to be. And this is going to cause a little bit of a design issue for me. But because I organized everything as a component, I can do something really cool here. So check this out. I'm going to turn on the origin. and We can see where it is. I'm going to right click on this handle grip. Oh, and by the way, let me back up a step. Notice that because my handle grip was active when I inserted the camera case in it actually put it underneath this handle grip so this is literally everything that has to do with my design okay really cool in fact so cool that I can come in here and say move and it's gonna move the origin the bodies the canvases the sketches and the camera case all at the same time so for example, I'm going to use that point to point again. I'm going to say I want to go from the center of the grip. So you can kind of see this little plus symbol right there. I'll go ahead and click there. And I want to move it over to this 0, 0, 0 point. So I'll click there and you can see the handle moved over, the camera moved over, everything moved all at the same time. So now I'll go ahead and capture that position. Now I have a plane that slices through the center of it and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that made sense. It was designed kind of off center, but I'm able to quickly and easily move it on center 
for this next step. My next step is I want to create a sketch that slices right through the center of this design. So I'll grab that guy and say create sketch and we can see if I rotate sure enough the piece of paper slices right through the center of our grip. Okay hopefully these tips are useful to uh, to you guys and hopefully Aaron's able to answer any of your comments and questions as we're going through. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to somehow mount this um, camera case to the top of my grip here. So I'm going to use some existing information. So under, in fact, I'm going to minimize that guy. I'll go to create project and I'm going to use the project command or P key for short. Okay. Now, when you do the project command, you'll notice you have two options, specified entities and bodies. Specified entities allows you, for example, to project just a particular face, for example. But if I were to change this to bodies, you'll notice it's going to project basically a silhouette of the whole body. So again, depending on what you want, I sometimes only want specified entities. For example, I only care about this little region right here. I don't need to project the whole body, everything. So I'm just going to click here. You kind of see it highlights it. I'll say OK. Now what did it do? Well, let me turn off the camera case. And you can see that it actually projected the information from that imported model that was probably created in a different CAD system we grabbed the information from that model and put it on our sketch right there. And notice we can capture to it and do all this kind of stuff. Well, what I care about is I want to know, uh, I want to keep this circle here, but the rest of it I'm just going to use as reference. So again, another uh, tip that I use a lot is I'm going to select everything. I'm going to unselect that circle and I'm going to switch it to construction. And notice what it did. It grabbed everything and changed it to the light pencil line, but it didn't change the circle because I told it to unselect the circle because I'm going to actually use this circle. And you can see it's kind of shaded, which means that it's a valid profile. Now I'm going to use this information. I'll just come in here and say, let's create a circle from the center to this pencil line right here. So I'm just going to click on that dashed construction line and I now have a circle. Okay. Then I need to create some lines that go vertically. So I think the easiest way of doing that is just to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and you'll notice I can't capture down here. It's not snapping to any point. So I'm just going to leave it kind of floating up in space like so. And now I'm going to use my constraints to help me with my design. I want this line to be tangent to that circle, right? So I'm going to come in here and say tangent, that line and that circle, that line and that circle. And then I want this line to slice through the middle. So I'll go ahead and say I want this line to be coincident with that point right there. And now you can see that these lines are tangent to that circle right there. Okay. And then the same thing with this. I need it to capture to something. So I'm going to go ahead and say coincident. I'll click that line there. But you'll notice that I don't have anything to click on down here. So that's where the project command comes into play again. So I'll come in here and say project. Again, I just need specified entities. I could just click that top face or I could click this face here. I'll go ahead and do that just so you can kind of see what's happening here. And you can see that it projected those two edges. Coincident, that line with this right here. And you can see that it brought the rectangle down and made it match and touch that edge. And now, believe it or not, I have my finished design. In fact, I might even simplify it even more and change that horizontal line 
to a construction line. That way it doesn't slice through my uh, profile there. If this was a solid line, I would have to select three profiles, which is totally fine. But since this isn't really an object line anymore, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it to a construction line. And now I only have to pick those two regions. So I've kind of des designed the, uh, the boss or the standoff. And you can see it's right in the center. So I can come in here and say extrude. Now here's another trick. Um, I don't know if any of you notice this. Notice I'm still in my sketch. I still have my sketch palette. It still says finish sketch. Okay, but I can rotate isometrically. I can pre-select my sketches, right mouse click and say extrude and it's going to automatically finish my sketch for me and put me into the extrude command. So instead of having to click finish sketch and then do an extrude, it's kind of saving a step for us. I'll go ahead and start to drag and we kind of see what this is looking like. Now obviously I want it to go in both directions so I'm going to say symmetric. So you can kind of see now as I drag in one direction it's going to go in the other direction. And I could just eyeball it but I'm going to say I want the whole length. And we can kind of see it's around about 21. Let's just make it 22. I'm going to say 22 in this case. And so now the whole length of this standoff is 22 millimeters. If I said half length, you can kind of see it's going to go 22 in one direction and 22 in the other direction. But whole length, it's going to say the whole length is 22 millimeters. It's also going to join it to my existing design. So I'm going to go ahead and say OK. And I now have something that looks like this. Now you might ask, well, shouldn't you have done that before you did the shell? Well, in this case, no. I wanted this to be a pretty strong part, so I don't want it to be hollow on the inside. So I actually did my shell first, and then we're attaching this big chunk on top. And I want it to be pretty strong because we're tightening down this bolt and nut, and I didn't want it to, to fracture or anything like that. So again, you kind of have to think about how am I going to manufacture this design? Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my camera back on, my camera case I should say, and you can kind of see it's floating right there. And I want to capture some information on this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a sketch. So I'll say create sketch on this front plane. And I want to capture the information so I'll use the project command again so I'll say project. I usually use the P key, the shortcut key, um, but I just wanted to show you where that was in the menu. Now notice it's set to selection filter of specified entities and so it's only going to project the little tiny face or whatever or edge that I'm hovering over. In this case I want to project the whole thing. So I'm going to say bodies. And you'll notice now when I'm hovering over this, you can kind of see a little preview. It's going to grab that whole body and project it onto our sketch. In fact, if I turn off the camera case, you can kind of see some lines. Now you might say, well, how come they're not all connected or whatever? It kind of depends on the curvatures if it's a cylinder or a solid edge or whatever. But I now have enough information in here for me to complete my design. So for example, you'll see I'm going to just create a rectangle and I can catch to that corner there. And I'm just going to drag up and draw a rectangle like so and draw another rectangle like so. It doesn't even really matter how far up they are. But all I care about is these rectangles, these grooves, I'm going to machine through our standoff. So again, I can right mouse click, say extrude. And if I start to drag, you'll see exactly what's happening here. We're, we're taking the information from the camera case and we're going to create these grooves. Now a question I get quite often is like, well, how far do you need to extrude? 
Well, in this case, I could snap to a particular face and it will snap to that face. Or what I like to do is I'm going to say, let's go symmetrically. In fact, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it go symmetrically and I want it to go through all of it. So instead of a distance, I'm going to say go through all and it will figure out how far it needs to cut. And there we go. So I just said, take that rectangle and extrude through all of this design. Now if we turn the case back on, you'll see that it sits right inside those grooves. Okay. Now unfortunately we don't have any um, gap or anything like that. Okay. So this would be a pretty tight fit. And I obviously want to give it some, some extra width and all that kind of stuff to allow me to um, slide it together and then the nut and the bolt is going to kind of tighten everything down and let me show you what I mean by this so I'm going to go ahead and you know if I zoom up here you'll see that it fits exactly perfect in fact if I turn on my section analysis you can see that there's really no gap or anything like that so I'm going to turn off my camera case okay then I'm going to just draw a selection box around this region and you'll notice it selected a bunch of faces and what I want to do is I want to move this face to the left a little bit I want to move this face down a little bit I want to move this face to the right just a little bit but you'll notice it also selected some faces I don't want to change so I'm gonna control select that face and I'm gonna control select that hole so now I only have these two little notches selected I'll come under modify and there's a cool command in here called offset face and I'll go ahead and drag the arrow so you can kind of see what's going to happen here but as I drag that arrow you can see how we're basically adding some extra width to these areas and so it's moving this face to the right this face down etc and I don't need to go very far so let's just go maybe um, minus 0.2 in this case 0.2 of a millimeter okay so I just offset those faces let's turn the camera case back on and now you can see that sure enough I have some some slop in there so I know that my camera case will fit in there okay now here's another tip I like to share um, when you're creating your designs, you can rename features, sketches, bodies, anything you can rename. And maybe I'm gonna have to come back to this at a later time. So for example, maybe I 3D print this thing and I still can't get the case to fit down into these grooves. Maybe because of the tolerance of my uh, 3D printer or whatever. And I might want to come back and make a change, but where do I do that? Well, it's going to be in this offset face, but notice it just says offset faces. I can right click and say rename. And I could give this a, a name that makes more sense to me. For example, clamp um, gap or something like that. Okay. And now when I hover over this, you can see that that feature is the clamp gap. Okay. And you'll see the rest of these are just called like sketch three, extrude two, or whatever. So you could actually come in here and rename any of these features. And you could call this, you know, clamp, groove, extrude, or whatever. So if you start getting complex timelines and you're kind of confused on what is doing what, I highly recommend that you rename any of these features you can rename any of these sketches so I could come in here and actually I just have to click on it and say you know master sketch or whatever um, you know this guy here could be um, you know whatever it is in fact I even forgot what it was okay so that's that's the uh, standoff or whatever so I could call this standoff sketch and I could call this guy, um, you know, groove sketch or whatever. You know, again, I'm kind of just making things up real quick, but it makes much more sense. You know, now you know which one is the master sketch. It's that guy there. Which is the sketch that has to do with the groove? It's that guy there, right? 
So I highly recommend that you take the time to rename parts, sketches, features, etc. Okay? Another tip that I like to use is, and it's unfortunately it's not used as often as it should be, and that's this comments field right here. I'm gonna go ahead and expand that open, and you can almost think of this as like, um, like post-it notes that are inside of your design. So for example, the next thing I wanna do, and in fact, I'm gonna turn off my case here. I want to put a bolt and a nut in here, but my memory is extremely poor. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember lengths and diameters and pitches and all that kind of stuff. In fact, I need to give a shout out to my buddy Angelo. He's the, actually the one that showed me this. When he's doing complicated designs, he'll, he'll keep track of like thread pitches and what tool he use, he wants to use to manufacture this particular design. So um, he, he showed me this, I think it's really cool. I'm gonna come in here and say, I want to measure this hole and I can see that it's a diameter of five. Now notice when I hover over that five, it says click to copy to clipboard. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that five. Then I can come over here and paste it. So I'm gonna just do a control V for paste and notice it grabbed that dimension. I can come in here and say, okay, this is the, the whole diameter. Diameter, okay. And now how long do I need that to be? Um, so for example, I could do another measurement from this face here to that back face there. That's a total distance of 22 millimeters. So I could click on that guy. I'll paste that in there. And I'm gonna call this a clamp, oops, spell it right, clamp depth, okay. I can even capture images. I can um, make a comment on it. I can uh, put a particular point on it and capture that. So for example, I could just capture this image right now and you'll see that it, it captured that. And when I save it, all of this information is gonna get saved with my design. So, okay. So now I have that information. What I wanna do next is somehow um, create a bolt and a nut that's going to clamp this whole thing together. I like to use McMaster car, so I'm going to come out to McMaster car. You can see I've already done this, so let me go ahead and clear that out. Okay, um, let me, actually let me close that. Insert McMaster car. There we go. Okay, I'm going to make this a little bit larger so you can kind of see what's going on here. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is find a, a bolt or a screw that'll work. So I'm gonna click on that guy. Now, I love this filter over here. What do I mean by that? Well, I know I need a metric size, so I'm gonna click on metric, and you can see it kind of filters everything out. I also know, because of my notes, I already forgot what the whole diameter was, it's five, okay. I'll come over here and look for a metric five. So I'll click on that. And then I can come down here, and what was the length? Oh yeah, it's written right over here in my comments. I know my length is 22, okay? Then I can come in and say, well, I want a rounded head, and maybe I want it to be stainless steel, okay? So I'm gonna come in here and just grab this guy. And we've done uh, live streams in the past where we show how to bring McMaster car components and other um, components from other manufacturers into our designs. But you'll notice if it has a little CAD symbol, I can just click on that scroll down and I'm just gonna say save I almost wish it said open because it's it's actually bringing it right into my design now another quick tip I like to do is I'm gonna rotate this so it's actually in the correct direction and then I kinda get it close so I'm just gonna drag it up into this region like so okay then you'll notice that popular point to point that I've been using, I'm gonna go ahead and say point to point. And if I hover over this edge, it actually recognizes that as an edge and I can grab that little plus symbol, kind of hard to see right there. And then what's my target point? I'm just gonna hover over this circle and you can see that plus symbol. And I was able to move it from one point to another. 
Now my, my trick there, or my tip is to kind of get it in the correct orientation first, and then it's easy to move point to point. If it was rotated 180 degrees or at some weird angle, it might not work as well. Um, and you might have to use a joint to do that. But all I care about is getting this in the correct location. And it's now exactly centered and touching this face. So I'm going to go ahead and capture the position of that screw and say, OK. There we go. OK. Now I want to put a nut over here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. Let me insert a McMaster car component. I'll say nut, and I want to do a cap nut in this case. So I'm going to click on cap nut, and just like before, let me expand this open. I'm going to say metric, and obviously I need a metric five because it's a five diameter. So I'm going to do a metric five stainless steel. Let's go ahead and do that guy. There's that little CAD symbol. I'll click there and hit save. And I'm not having to model this or anything. I'm just basically able to use McMaster Car to do this. So let me kind of drag this close, kind of like what I did before. Okay, now I'll do the exact same thing. I'll say point to point. And I'm gonna hover over this little edge right here. And you can see that little plus symbol appear right there, okay? So hopefully you can kind of see that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that plus symbol. And I want to bury this nut. So basically I want this edge to be on this plane. So again, I'm going to just click that little plus symbol. And you can see how the nut kind of gets buried in the part. But we have the acorn part of it that we can grab onto if we need to. I'll go ahead and capture the position. I'll say OK. Now I can minimize these comments. I don't really need to see them anymore, but they're always there. Okay, so you can always expand them. So again, I highly recommend you use those. Okay, so what I want to do now is remove the, uh, the, the shape of the nut. Now some of you might say, oh, you could just do a combined cut, but because there's like threads and all that kind of stuff, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just create a sketch on that face there. P for project. I'm going to use the project command again. So P for project is the shortcut. And I'm going to project the whole body. And watch what happens when I click on the acorn. You can actually see the shape of the nut. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. I'll say OK. And it projected the shape of the nut right there. OK. I'll go ahead and um, turn off the, the nut, and I'll go ahead and turn off the bolt right now. So there's that profile. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these profiles, and I'm going to say extrude. Now how far do I need to extrude? Well, I'm going to have to turn the nut back on. Oops, wrong guy. But I can't see where that is. So here's another tip. If you use the control five, so I'm holding down my control key and hitting the number five, it's gonna change my, my type to hidden lines. So basically what it's doing is it's going to display settings, visual style, and notice shaded, shaded with hidden edges, shaded with visible edges. So control four, five, and six, so that's all I really did right here. So control four looks like that. Control five looks like that. Control six is what we're used to seeing. So I'm not having to guess. I can actually just go control five and check this out. I can actually pick that face. So I'm not having to probe through or anything like that. So this is a really cool tip. I bet you Aaron's writing this one down saying, oh, I'm going to do a quick tip on that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and click there and notice what it's doing. It's, it's going to extrude that shape all the way back to the correct distance. However, there's a catch. And that's this right here, objects to cut. If I expand that open, notice that it's actually cutting through the handle grip and it's cutting through the acorn nut. So I'm going to turn that off 
And now it's only cutting through the body, the gray body. If this was turned on, you'll see it's actually removing all of the threads and all that kind of stuff. So be aware that uh, this objects to cut will allow you to specify what are we cutting through. I'll go ahead and say OK. Let's turn off the nut and we can see there is that recess. I'll do my control um, 4 again, control 5, control 6. So you can see all of those options shaded with no lines, shaded with hidden lines, and then shaded with just object lines or visible lines. Okay. Now, just like I did before, this nut is the exact same size as that hole, which when you go to 3D print might not be um, the best for this. So I'm going to, let me go back to Control-5, I'll say Modify Offset Face, and I'm just going to draw a box around all of those faces like so, including the back one. And let's just offset it. Um, Let's just go maybe minus, again, minus 0.2. You can kind of see how it grew just a little bit. So I hold down my control key. You can kind of see the difference. I'll say OK. Let's turn the nut back on. And now you can see that there's actual a little bit of clearance in there, but not enough that the nut could rotate, for example. So that nut is captured inside of that um, 3D printed area right there. Okay, last thing, this is just personal <laughs> preference. If I were to create a drawing of this guy, let me turn on my section and let's just zoom up on this acorn and the, the bolt and you can see that the threads actually don't match up. So if I were to do a section drawing, you know, this could look potentially weird. So how do I go about fixing that? Well, all I really need to do is rotate the screw or the bolt to line up. So check this out. I'm going to go ahead and click on the screw and say move. Now how do I want to move it? I want to rotate it. Now what do I want to rotate it around? I'm going to rotate my view a little bit. I'm just going to grab one of these radial edges like so. Okay. And then I'm going to look at back at the front view and let's just zoom up over here like so. Now I'm going to type in, let's just rotate it 10 degrees and watch what happens. You see the screw shifted just a little bit. Let me go maybe 40 degrees or something and you can see, hey, we're getting closer. Um, and so let's go one more. Let's maybe try like 70 in this case. And there we can see that the threads now fit really nice. Okay. I'll capture that position. Again, you don't have to do this, but to me it just makes if I were to do a drawing, it just makes it look that much nicer. So what did we do there? Well, we basically said, I'll go ahead and do this again real quick. I know we're going a little bit over, I apologize. Um, so I'm gonna rotate around this edge. And if I grab this guy, this little rotate handle here, you'll see that we're just basically threading in or out that screw. We're just kind of changing the direction until it lines up the way we want it to line up. Okay? Okay, and then the last thing, let me go ahead and turn the uh, the camera case back on here. One of the things I wanted to do was to make sure that I could um, you know, hold it comfortably and you can kind of see the camera case is almost straight up and down. I wanted to add a little bit of angle to it so I'm going to just right click on the camera case and say move. I'm going to say rotate. What do I want to rotate it around? Well, any of these circles or edges, it really doesn't matter. I'm just going to start to rotate back and let's just go about 15 degrees. And what that did is it allowed me to hold on to the, uh, the grip a little bit easier and kind of more naturally and let the camera face forward. And I just kind of held the grip at a slight angle like so. And it was just more natural into uh, um, for filming for example okay I'll turn off the camera case I'll turn off the the nut and the bolt finally I might add maybe a small fillet let's just do maybe a one millimeter fillet 
on there. I didn't want to have any sharp edges that might cut me or anything like that. So I'll do another, um, let me just click on this edge. Let's do a two millimeter fillet. Again, why am I doing this? To me, it just adds strength into my 3D print. Um, instead of having a sharp edge or whatever, this is gonna gradually attach to this horizontal face and that'll give me a nicer print. Okay, so now I've got the grip designed the way I want. I could come back again and turn on this and modify these. I've already shown that, so I'm not going to in this case. So now I wanna send it to my 3D printer. All I have to do is go under Tools, Make, right here, you can see it says 3D Print. What's the selection? I'm gonna go ahead and just select this handle. And you'll notice uh, I have some options in here. I can preview the mesh. It tells me how many triangles and even gives me a preview of what that's gonna look like. I can say I want low, medium, or high, so you can kinda see how many triangles that'll be. I'm just gonna go ahead and do medium. And you'll see right here, we have the option to send to a 3D print utility. So in my case, I use Cura, but you know, if you use like Slicer or Repetti or Host or whatever, you can see you can add those in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and send it right to my Cura. So as soon as I say okay, it's actually going to start up Cura. Now it takes about 10 or 15 seconds um, to start up Cura on my machine. But let's uh, see what happens once this comes across. So it's loading up my machines here. Again, I apologize. I don't know why Cura takes so long to load up on my, my computer. I'm going to take a look at the chat. Looks like Aaron's been busy. So thank you. And again, I apologize going a little bit over, but hopefully you're finding this uh, to be an interesting topic. So there we go. You can see it brought the handle in. Um, I've got my, my profile set. And let me show you what I was talking about. Um, let's go ahead and slice this guy. And here is that wall line count that I was talking about. So right now you can see it's set to three. I'm gonna go ahead and preview. And let's just slice through here. I'm gonna slice down a little bit and rotate. And here you can see that we have those solid edges right here. So this is gonna print very strong and water won't you know, seep in or air won't leak out or whatever. Uh, and so that is why I was very specific about my nozzle spacing times two, times three, times four, etc. So I get a result that looks like this. So again, not necessary, but it's just something to think about if you're gonna be 3D printing. And here you can see where you know we added that large fillet and so each one is kind of building on top of the next one and I don't have to worry about internal support. So you can kind of see how all of that's built up and there's our final design. Then we send it to the printer and we're good to go. So I hope you um, learn something, designing something like this. I mean, this is one of those things, yeah, you can, I could have used a, a stick of wood <laughs> and that would have worked, but honestly, I've got Fusion, I've got a 3D printer. I wanted to put some stuff in there of my own, like I wanted to make sure it floats, and by the way, it does, I tested it. In fact, it floated way better than I expected it to. It actually went straight up to the surface, even though the, the camera weighs a little bit. Um, I was able to make it fit my personal hand which I thought was kind of cool. Um, and I was able to you know, make this exactly the way I wanted to. So you have the tools, you have the methods, um, you can do some cool stuff like swim with manatees. Um, join me next week. I'm gonna show how to um, create textures in Mudbox and bring that into Fusion. So for example, creating a sign, for example, it might have like a, a wood grain or a wavy texture. Uh, we have a product called Autodesk Mudbox. Um, it does cost a, for subscription, but it's only $10 uh, a month or I think $80 for the whole year. So it's just one more tool to add to your toolbox. So definitely join me next week for that and keep on fusioning 
Aaron, thank you very much and hope to see all of you on our next live stream. Thank you.